Welcome everyone to this uh, TMDL public presentation. My name is Jim Hallmark and I'm an, um, an environmental engineer with the Iowa Department of Natural Resources uh, Water Quality Improvement Section. And today we're going to discuss water quality concerns at Briggs Woods Lake. Specifically, we're going to discuss an addendum to a previously approved water quality improvement plan to include an impairment for pH. So um, an outline for today's discussion uh, is we're going to have a, a brief, discuss, discuss, uh, brief description or discussion of uh, the Briggs Woods Lake watershed and the lake itself. I'm gonna talk about uh, how an assessment is conducted to determine the, the water quality of a, a water body. And then a brief discussion on the existing water quality improvement plan. And a discussion on the new impairment of pH and how it uh, ties or relates to the existing water quality improvement plan. Briggs Woods Lake is located in Hamilton County, just southwest of Weber City. I'm uh, sorry, Webster City. The watershed has an area of approximately 7,000 acres. And to put that in perspective, an acre is about the size of a football field. So the watershed has an, uh, has an area uh, approximately equal to 7,000 football fields. The makeup of uh, the land use within the watershed consists of 82% row crops, which is soybeans and corn, and another 10% is grassland, which would be uh, pasture land, uh, non-graze land, and even CRP. So between the two of them, it makes up 92% of the land use within the watershed. <clears throat> and there's other, as you can see from the pie chart to the right, uh, additional land uses within the watershed, but basically 92% uh, of it is made up with row crops and grassland. The lake itself is, has a surface area of uh, approximately 60 acres, which again is about 60 football fields. And the volume of the lake is 686 acre feet, which would be like 686 acres with one foot of water over the top of each acre. On the map here, you can see the, these lines. These are contour lines, uh, or they're bathymetry lines or their contours that uh, at the lake bottom. And that comes in uh, ha handy for those that like fishing and don't want to know where the deep parts of the lake are. <clears throat> Assessment of the water body is done through water sampling, collection, and analysis. Um, <clears throat> during monitoring and assessment period, samples are collected. Um, the assessment begins with collecting samples at the ambient monitoring location at Briggs Woods. Samples are collected during the recreational season, which is March 15th through, through November 15th, with a minimum of three samples typically being collected each year, <clears throat> with most of the samples being collected between Memorial Day and Labor Day. Samples are collected from the same location each year. And, and the samples are analyzed for such things as turbidity, phosphorus, nitrogen, chlorophyll, dissolved oxygen, E. coli, just to name a few. Once the samples are collected, analysis are, analysis are performed to evaluate the water quality of the lake. Briggs Woods Lake was added to the 303D impaired waters list in, 2000, in the 2004 uh, listing cycle for low DO and algae. The uh, results of algae cause uh, clarity and turbidity issues, and the low DO results in fish kills. Uh, through an analysis, it was determined that the pollutant causing these impairments was phosphorus. So as a result of this, and, and it being on the uh, uh, impaired waters list, 
a water quality improvement plan and the TMDL were written in 2012 addressing the pollutant and the impairments. And these were, this uh, water quality improvement plan was approved by EPA. Subsequent to this approval, the lake was impaired for a high pH. So the purpose in our, our um, addendum is to demonstrate that the high pH can be related or tied to, to algae. Um, <clears throat> So to, to demonstrate the, that, P, uh, that the water body is impaired for pH, we're going to plot the data <coughs> that we, uh, and uh, the sample data. We're going to plot the pH versus our, our time, or in this case, a date. We're going to plot our uh, pH values on our x-axis. We're going to range from 6.5 to 10.5. And, and on our, uh, sorry, that was our y-axis. And on our x-axis, we're going to plot our dates, uh, data collected from 2012 through 2016. In this uh, graph, you can see that I've highlighted or shaded uh, values, pH values greater than 9 with red. For a water body to be impaired for pH, the pH uh, is great, it must exceed the value of 9. So I've highlighted that in red, and pH values less than nine are shaded in green. So as we plot this data, we see that uh, the red diamonds represent pH values greater than nine, and the blue triangles represent pH values less than nine. And from here we can see that there's a significant number of pH values that exceed the value of nine, so therefore the lake would be impaired for pH. As I stated previously, we want to show and demonstrate that the pH is, is tied to um, the algae uh, in, within the lake. So we're gonna plot the, the information a little bit differently. We're gonna plot uh, pH versus the chlorophyll A, uh, trophic state index, or TSI. We're going to plot pH on the y-axis, and we're going to plot this chlorophyll A TSI value on the x-axis. The TSI is a classification system designed to rate the biological activity of a water body. The higher the TSI value, the greater the biological activity. In this case, uh, in, the, in this case of chlorophyll A, the higher the value, the greater the concentrations of chlorophyll A or a greater mass of algae exists in the lake. For a water body to be impaired for algae, the chlorophyll A TSI value must exceed a threshold value of 65. So in this particular graph, I've highlighted uh, the area with values of greater than a 65 in red, while the green shaded area is uh, TSI values less than 65. I've also shown a vertical line, a heavy green vertical line uh, at, at a TSI value of 65. And just maybe for um, observations, I've put a, a heavy green vertical or a horizontal line at the pH value of nine. So as we plot this data, we can see that, uh, again, like in the previous graph, red diamonds represent pH values greater than 9, and blue triangles represent pH values less than 9. And we can see from this, this graph that the majority of our pH values that exceed uh, the value of 9 also exceed a TSI value of 65 up in this, up in this um, region here. We also have a black line, and this represents a trend line that indicates that as uh, TSI values increase, so do our pH values. 
Um, and from these simple comparisons, we can conclude that the pH values are tied to or related to the algae mass in the water body. Therefore, the pH impairment is a result of the algae, and the algae is a result of the pollutant phosphorus. This conclusion is further demonstrated from the simple diagram of the photosynthesis, photosynthesis process. This diagram represents a, a non-aquatic plant. However, the photosynthesis process is the same for the aquatic and the non-aquatic plant. During photosynthesis, the carbon cycle is disrupted by the algal consumption of carbon dioxide, which raises the pH during the daylight hours. And during the nighttime, as the algae respirates, it consumes oxygen, which results in the lowering of the dissolved oxygen. If we look at the uh, chemical reaction equations shown down here in the bottom, um, <clears throat> we see that carbon dioxide combined with H2O, or water, uh, produces carbonic acid, which then dissolves or dissociates into a hydrogen ion and, and bicarbonate. And, and so as um, this reaction takes place, as it goes to the right, it makes the, the water um, more acidic, which lowers the pH. However, during photosynthesis, this carbon dioxide is consumed by the plant, which creates a sink, which then in turn forces this, this reaction back this way. And as, it, and as it forces the reaction back to the left, the acidity of the water decreases, which increases the pH. From this simple analysis, we draw the conclusion that since the pollutant phosphorus causing the pH impairment is the same pollutant causing algae and the low DO impairments, the solution for all three impairments is the same, which is to reduce the pollutant, which is to reduce the pollutant phosphorus. Therefore, since we already have a water quality improvement plan addressing the pollutant phosphorus, it would not be necessary to develop a new water quality improvement plan. We did not discuss in detail the elements of the existing water quality, water quality improvement plan, only those details that were pertinent to our discussion for the pH impairment. However, if you would like to view the existing water quality improvement plan, you can view it at the website listed. All right, with that, thank you for listening. Uh, if you have any technical comments uh, with regards to this uh, water quality improvement plan addendum, you can submit those to me at, at uh, my email, uh, james.hallmark at dnr.iowa.gov. Okay, so if you have uh, any additional official comments, you can direct those to Jeff Burkus at his email, jeff.burkus at dnr.iowa.gov. And if you and if those uh, you need to submit those comments to Jeff by January 19th of 2021. At the conclusion of our public comment period, we will address any comments received and then we will forward the document along with those comments to the Environmental Protection Agency for their, their approval. Thank you again for taking the time to listen and have a good day.